All right, we are uh, about to go right now to the mayor of Dayton, Ohio. The president has, of course, just left this area. Um, she was, you know, talked about welcoming there, but wasn't highly in favor of it. She did have the opportunity to meet with him, so let's hear what she has to say. Very eloquent about some of the things he had to say about us. Thank you. Uh, the mayor has shown unbelievably good leadership. I was here on Sunday, much of the afternoon, with the mayor and with the police chief. Uh, from the, some of the first responders that saved lives, we saw some of them today, too. We met all the police officers who unquestionably saved the lives of dozens and dozens and dozens of people in the Oregon District. Um, both of us spoke with the president right when he got off Air Force One. Uh, both the mayor and I asked the president to call on Senator McConnell to move, to bring the Senate back in session this week to tell the Senate that he wants the, um, the background checks bill that has already passed the House, that he wants it on the floor. I asked the president to promise to me and to the American people that he will sign that bill after he's spoken out in support of it with Senator McConnell. Um, he was only said that we will get things done. Uh, I then later asked the president um, to, uh, if I said, if you care about mental health, and many people who support the gun lobby and consistently say, well, it's not guns, it's mental health. Well, it isn't mostly that. It's mostly too many guns on the street. When I said to him how important it was, if he cares about mental health, the important thing is not to repeal the Affordable Care Act and not to cut Medicaid. Um, that is essential because Medicaid matters so much for people that struggle with mental health issues. Uh, the last thing that I said to the president before he left, we had just met with police officers um, in, in the hospital in a conference room, and the, um, the president said, we want to give honors and awards to these police officers. And I said, Mr. President, respectfully, um, in a group of, I don't know, 20 or 30, 40 people, respectfully, the most important thing you can do for these police officers is take these assault weapons off the streets so they don't have to go up against those assault weapons when they need to take down a shooter when they need to make an arrest. So, well, so Mayor, how would you about, characterize uh, your conversation with the president? Do you feel like he was hearing you? I, th I think he heard me. Uh, I don't know if he will take action. I'm hoping for the people of Dayton that he does. But we, you know, both the senator and I spoke um, very directly uh, what we've been saying the whole time about the need for common sense gun legislation. Senator, both the of you been, mass shootings have been politicized. Democrats and Republicans pointing the finger at each other. Don't both parties take blame in the inability to find a solution to these mass shootings? No, no, no. Uh, there have been mass shootings under both what Democrats do you mean, and Republicans. Tell me why you believe that. Both, there have been mass shootings under both Democrat and Republican and, and administrations. And Republicans for, for years now have dug in and done the bidding of the NRA. The, the National Rifle Association, the gun lobby, gives millions of dollars to Republican candidates and spends millions and millions against Democrats like me that have, that have get an F from the NRA, that have stood up to the NRA. We can't get anything done in the Senate because Mitch McConnell and the President of the United States are in bed with the gun lobby. There's a lot of things we can work on um, to make this work better. Guns is a big, big part of this. Certainly, mental health services matter, but the same people that say it's mental health that's not too many guns on the street are the same people that try to cut Medicaid and the same people that try to repeal the Affordable Care Act. So be honest about this. Guns is a big, big part of this, and we have a whole political party in this country now, with the exception of Congressman Turner, I would add now, who's been on the right side, that that's in bed with the gun lobby. You can call it gridlock, but it's because of that special interest group. That, 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 Senator that, that, that swamp that has a lock on the government. Senator, both you and the mayor have been critical of this president before. And in fact, you, Senator, uh, initially, you were not going to meet with the president. You changed your mind. I'm just wondering, a, a lot of the American people feel as though we've been here before. We've heard all this before. We've been in this situation in the past. Did either of you hear anything at all that would lead you, put, lead you to believe that this time something might be different? I changed my mind in large about coming. I didn't want in any way encourage the president's racist talk and divisive talk. I came because Mayor Whaley asked me to come, and I came because I thought maybe I'd have a chance to talk to the president about mental health issues, about not cutting Medicaid, and I'd get a chance to talk to the president about pushing, putting pressure on Senator McConnell to 
ban assault weapons, which Congress did for a 10-year period once, bipartisanly, and to get the president, because if the president tells the Congress, pass an assault weapon ban, if the president says, pass uh, uh, legislation for universal background checks, the Republican Congress and the Senate will move on it, and the House will undoubtedly move on it. I'd like so to we, can, we can do that. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, this this for us in Dayton, we hope so. I'm not holding my breath. Uh, you know, too often we just see complete inaction because they're waiting just for time for people to forget that nine people died in Dayton uh, because of a, a gun that was too, um, that shouldn't be, it shouldn't be legal, frankly. Uh, you know, we pointed out, I pointed out to the, the president that uh, gov now governor, former senator Mike DeWine voted for the assault weapons ban. It, there was a time when this was bipartisan. And so we're looking for those people in Congress to come together because the majority of Americans agree. So this should be an action. Do I think that we're going to see another mass shooting tomorrow or Friday? Probably, because Washington will not move. When you looked in his eyes, did he seem like someone who was ready to take action, or did he seem like someone who was just going to let this, as you said, let die down? This is the first time I met the president, so I don't think my ability to look in his eyes is going to give you any insight on what he's thinking. You had a lighthearted vote with him at the airport, laughing. What was that? I'm sorry? Did you have a lighthearted vote with him? You were laughing with him? No, no. I mean, the, the conversation at the airport was pretty brief. You know, he was kind of moving pretty quickly to, uh, towards us, and it was like, you know, Mr. President, the city of Dayton and the people of Dayton really are looking forward to some action. That's what you can do to help us, is to get some action on common sense gun legislation. Did you specifically talk about tone, his tone? No. No. I talked to him about something. I, I'm very concerned about a president that, that divides in his rhetoric and plays to race in his rhetoric, in his racist. I, I remember President Bush, who I agreed with about very little. He wanted to privatize Social Security. He lied about the Iraq War. But after September 11th, President Bush went to a mosque and said, Muslims didn't attack the United States, terrorists did. President Obama, after the two most awful shootings of all the shootings, um, Sandy Hook in Charleston went to comfort them and, and talked healing, talked and sang healing language. I wish this president would do that. We did not talk about that. We talked about Medicaid and getting Congress to move. Um, I don't know the president intimately, but I will continue to call publicly on him on all of those. Well, the police department said that. Well, he was received well by the patients, as yes. you'd expect. I mean, They're hurting. He, what did he say? Oh, he was comforting, was and he nice. did the right things, and Melania did the right things. And um, it's his job, in part, to comfort people. Uh, I'm glad he did it in that room, those, those um, hospital rooms. Do you think the Dayton Police Department said in a tweet about an hour ago that the president was not planning to stop by the Oregon District. There were well over 100 people there around that time. What are your thoughts on that decision? I think it was a good decision for him not to stop in the Oregon District. And why was that? Well, look, I mean, I think, how many of you were here for the Sunday vigil? Any of you? Any? Okay, so you saw um, just some of the anger and um, uh, agitation in our community about it. Uh, I think a lot of people that are own, own businesses in that district aren't, aren't interested in the president being there. And, you know, a lot of the time his talk can be very divisive, and that's the last thing we need in Dayton. How do you there... feel about your community's response today? I've been, I've been proud of it. I mean, I, I haven't paid a lot of attention to the response uh, today, so you might know something I don't know. So, like, the senator and I literally just got back from the hospital. We didn't have cell phone, uh, cell phone um, service and then came right here. So... I would say, as someone who doesn't live in Dayton and admires the mayor so much, I would say this community has been extraordinary from, from the night it happened with the police to the, the, the um, rescue people that showed up from all the suburbs, five from the city, another 15 from the suburbs that got there within 20 minutes. Um, uh, the people at the hospital were terrific, and people showed, when the President of the United States came, they showed respect for the office. And a number of them said to me they're not great admirers of him privately, but they clearly showed respect for the office because the President of the United States is in town. That's one of the reasons I'm here, but in, in addition to the mayor's request. But um, I, I think this town has been just extraordinary from the KKK rallies to the rally to what happened in the tornado. And, in Trotwood and in, in, uh, in here and in Beaver Creek. What will you tell your colleague, Senator Portman, about about what you did today and whether or not you two will work together on trying to do the, the make yeah, the change? Rob, Rob and I didn't talk substance today about these issues. We talked for a moment about our work on pensions. Um, it wasn't a time to spend a lot of time talking to each other. We have a good relationship. We differ on the issue of guns. 
we hope we can find some common ground on this, but um, so far, so far we haven't. Uh, and uh, I'll just leave it at that. You Mayor, well, the, Mayor, what can you tell us about what you would tell people Council about members. the Oregon district um, and in terms of suburbs, in terms of people from across state and being willing to go back there after this, after this, you know, the next few days of coverage dies down? Right, we want people to come and, and this is the local uh, spot. These are local business owners with uh, local restaurants. So, you know, we want people to come and um, really support the district. We'll be having some activities over the coming months uh, for people to come down in larger, in larger forms. You'll hear more about that later. But the best thing you can do is, you know, uh, number one, you can donate to the Dayton Fund and the Dayton Foundation for those, for those victims that have been hurt. Number two, you can call the president and Senator Portman and thank Congressman Turner for action around guns and also your state legislature because the DeWine, uh, the DeWine stuff is coming, so there will be movement there. So, you know, calling, calling, calling about I'm from Dayton and I want action on this will be very important. And then number three, you can support our local businesses in the Oregon District. So those are three things that people can do really easily. The Oregon District, as you all know, I think far and wide is known for um, well, maybe almost any place in the state, a bunch of individual owned, locally owned businesses. Do you have any plans to meet with the? That. Do you have mm -hmm. any plans to meet with the Betts family? Have you reached out to them? Um, what are your? No, you know they're a victim family too, because of Megan, and so we have victim advocates for every single family. Uh, you know they, you know know very well that if they want to reach out to us, we're there in a heartbeat. But we know how tough this is for families, and so we're giving them the space. I do plan on going to some of the visitations in the coming weeks. Senator, what do you think you of the talk? screaming matches that broke out in the Oregon district this morning between President Trump supporters and protesters? I can't really comment on it because I haven't seen it yet. So, okay, we got one more question. Senator, you, you were calling on Mitch McConnell to call the Senate back since Sunday. Any progress on that front? And with Portman saying that feels there's consensus on the issue of expanded background checks, are you confident there are an unopposed well, passing like that? I have um, said it repeatedly since Sunday, soon after I called Nan and decided to come to Dayton right away and um, went on a, a talk, national show and, and called on McConnell to do that. I talked to Senator Schumer since then. He's on board. A number of Democrats have now called on, the, on Senator McConnell to come back. Um, I have seen no action yet. I mean, McConnell's got to break his addiction to drug company money. And he, I mean, not drug company, well, drug company money too, yeah, actually, but, um, to break his addiction to gun lobby money. And he hasn't seemed to even take a step in that direction. Okay, that's it, guys. I want to say, do you think this helped the um, healing and this is having the president come here? I think the victims and the first responders were grateful that the president of the United States came to date. And thank you. Yeah, that was important. Right. That, was important. that was important. I really want to thank Senator Brown for coming too. He got up early this morning from Cleveland, came down to Dayton, and spent the day with well, us. I haven't worked Super 72 grateful. straight hours like most of you in the press yeah. corps. So yeah. Yeah. Let me just say something. Thank, thank you for what you all do. I know that um, we just had a president of the United States in this town that tries to turn the public against you. And I, as you may know, I'm married to a journalist, but I believe this. She wouldn't have married me if I didn't think this way. But uh, what you do to make our country free with all the attacks on you and on our nation's institutions is so, so, so important. And thank you so much for you all that you do in the media. Thank you. Thank right. you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Good to see